It's strange, looking back. Strange how something as ordinary as a Saturday morning, with its quiet routines and familiar shadows, could mark the beginning of such an unexpected turn in my life. In the years since Richard's passing, I had come to find comfort in the quiet corners of our home, in the steady rhythm of days alone. But that morning, no, something had shifted, even if I couldn't yet name it. David, my stepson, had been staying with me for a few weeks. By then, he had returned to this house, not as the awkward teenager I'd once known, but as a grown man, serious, with that familiar look of restlessness I recognized. I thought I could offer him comfort, maybe even guidance, the kind I used to offer patients back in my nursing days. I thought I knew what to expect. I didn't realize then. That the boundaries between what I expected and what I was willing to accept were about to blur in ways I hadn't anticipated. But I'm getting ahead of myself. It was, after all, just a Saturday morning, a morning of sunlight slipping through the blinds, the faint smell of coffee, and the unmistakable quiet of a house too large for one. And then, in the middle of folding sheets and dusting shelves, I felt it—a glance, a brush of a hand. The hint of something unspoken filling the space between us. It's funny how something so small, so innocent on the surface, can change everything. But perhaps I should start at the beginning, at the moment he walked back into my life, when David called to ask if he could stay with me for a few months. I didn't think much of it. He'd always been a polite young man, a little withdrawn, perhaps, but respectful. Since his father Richard passed, I hadn't seen much of David. He had his own life and circle of friends, and I understood the distance. But I could tell from his voice over the phone that something had changed, that maybe he needed a break from his world. And honestly, I needed the company. The first days were quiet. David moved his few belongings into the spare room and kept mostly to himself. He had a way of blending into the background, moving silently around the house as if he didn't want to intrude. I respected his space, trying not to impose. After all, he was a grown man now. At twenty-six, he was still young, but already too old for me to mother him in any overt way. Still, I couldn't help but notice how much he'd changed. His face had sharpened with age, his shoulders broader, and there was a depth in his eyes that hadn't been there before. He seemed burdened, almost haunted, though he didn't say much about it. I could only guess at the pressures of his life, his career, and the relationships I knew little about. It was on one of those early mornings, over coffee in the kitchen, that I got my first real glimpse of the man he had become. He seemed different, I said, watching him as he stared out the window, his fingers tapping rhythmically against his mug. He turned to me. A small, humorless smile on his lips. A lot's happened, he replied simply. I waited, giving him space to open up if he wanted, but he didn't offer any details. Instead, we sat there, each of us lost in our own thoughts. And though he didn't say it, I sensed that something inside him had shifted, something he couldn't quite put into words, something that maybe he wasn't ready to confront. In the days that followed, I found myself adjusting to David's presence in ways I hadn't expected. He wasn't just another person in the house; he was something else, something I hadn't quite anticipated. He had a quiet way about him, a steadiness that reminded me of Richard, but he was also different, intense in a way that I couldn't quite place, a seriousness that seemed to carry weight. One Saturday morning. I decided to tackle a deep clean of the house. It was one of those routines I'd grown used to, the kind of chore that kept my mind busy and my hands occupied. I wasn't expecting any help, but as I dusted shelves and gathered the linens, I heard footsteps behind me. Need any help? He asked, his voice a gentle interruption to the silence. I turned to find him standing there, a soft smile on his face, his hands tucked casually into his pockets. There was something different in his demeanor that morning, a softness, a hint of warmth I hadn't seen before. If you don't mind, I replied, handing him a stack of freshly laundered sheets. 
I could use an extra pair of hands. We worked together in companionable silence, moving from room to room, folding sheets and tidying shelves. I found myself surprised by how easily he fell into the rhythm of things, how natural it felt to have him there, sharing the quiet spaces of the house. At one point, as I reached up to dust a high shelf, I felt a gentle brush against my arm. David, steadying me as I wobbled slightly on the step stool, his touch was light, barely more than a passing graze, but it sent a ripple of awareness through me that caught me off guard. Careful, he murmured, his hand lingering for just a moment before he stepped back. Thank you, I replied. My voice softer than I'd intended. I felt my cheeks flush, a mix of embarrassment and something else I couldn't quite name. For the rest of the morning, there was a quiet tension between us, a subtle but undeniable shift that left me feeling.